Good morning, everyone. This is Mary. You are watching another little piece of my art, and welcome to my messy kitchen table. So, I made a video last month, uh, I think, about um, how I want to have my 2021 journal be partially a coloring book, or well, mostly a coloring book, and then, you know, some other pages in there. And I didn't have a book by itself that uh, met all those needs. So I needed to kind of do a little Frankensteining to get the uh, book that I want. All right, so I showed you in that video. I will link part one in the comments of this video. But I showed you in that video how I had a tattoo book with these perforated pages. And... Um, I what I have done here is go through that tattoo book and pull out the pages that I thought I would most likely want to color or you know at least doodle on something that was appealing to my own eye and all I've done here is just washi tape them together so I didn't think you needed to see me do that it would be quite come on camera uh, that would be quite boring so just lay your pages you know side by side whether you want one side up uh, printed side to white side or however you want them. I wanted them this way because I figured that way if I was drawing or sketching, I had more room without having to flip the page over and, and it would just make more sense to me, but you do you. So I have made, uh, let's see, one of these for every single, um, Hold on a second. I have made one one of those for every single signature in this book. And here are the signatures. The signature a signature is just a set of folded papers. We're just not gonna focus. Hang on, you guys. Let me turn on my kitchen light and see if that helps with this whole thing. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Okay, so a signature is is your folded pages sewn into a binding. So I've made one signature, or I mean one folded folio here for every signature in this book, all right? So the next thing that I did was I went to the Goodwill and found the thing I wanted for the cover because I do have placemats here at my house, but I didn't wanna, <coughs> excuse me, ruin any of my placemat sets by taking one out. So I found this one and I like this one because it has some body to it. Um, you know, there's many ways you could go about making a cover. You don't have to do it with fabric if you are not interested in that. Um, or you can do it with fabric and sew some pieces together with some nice <clears throat> sturdy interfacing in there to kind of give it some body. You could make your cover out of cardboard and make, you know, hinges on your spine so that your book opens, however you wanna do it. I have many journals that I have made um, using cereal boxes and um, I can also link Jenny Belly, that's how I learned how to do it, Jelly Benny, Jelly Benny on Jelly, Jenny Belly, Lord have mercy, on YouTube, <laughs> has great tutorial on how to make uh, cereal box journals. So that's how my whole, um, business with this started okay so I'm decided I'm going to use this I didn't even bring my book with me to the Goodwill so you can see here that my book is a little bit longer than this placemat um, I wanted it to be wider this way so that when I stuff my pages there will be more room in this spine to accommodate them um, but yeah, it being a little bit longer may or may not bother me. I may try to center it here so that there's just a little bit on each end. Um, also where this is sewn here, as you can see it's sewn, I can come here right under this one line of stitching. I can cut and that will give it like a frayed look without ruining it because there is that line of stitching to protect it. So that, that is something to think about. Um, when you're going to put together a journal, what you're going to want to have is uh, some kind of pokey tool. This is an all, all, A-W-L, I think that's how you say it. Um, actually, I think, is this an all? Yeah, it's an all. Uh, yeah, because it has the, 
metal piece on the top where if you, if you have to pound with a hammer to get, you know, make a hole in something, that's what this is for. You shouldn't need anything that heavy duty though. Right here I have these Crafter Square piecing and scoring tool set um, that I got at the Dollar Tree. And these are nice because this side will help you. It acts like a bone folder. They'll give you nice creases when you want to make creases because you're going to want to have nice sharp creases where you're going to poke through. So I'm not going to show you the sewing process today because I'm going to be doing this in bits and parts. Um, but we're going to see about deconstructing this coloring book. I could not find my exacto knife anywhere so i have this pair of scissors that used to be pretty sharp i'm not sure how sharp they are anymore um but we'll see what i can do so the first thing you see here how when you open a book um this part is connected to the cover here and then the rest is like its own book block so you can exacto the cover off if you want to do it that way but since i don't have an exacto knife i think i'm going to see if i can um get my scissors in some of this stitching here let me find actually there's a spot in this book that is very uh exposed coming apart here we go this page that i had worked on I had the book laying open for quite some time, and you can see how the whole innards here is exposed. So if I can get my scissors in there, I'm going to just cut and you want to be kind of careful that you don't, uh, you know, slice any of your pages, especially if you got something really sharp like an X-Acto knife. And also, please be careful not to cut yourself. I would feel very guilty if you cut yourself trying to follow along with me. So, there is your exposed spine here. And you're going to notice that you're going to have a lot of this goopy glue. Because the book is sewn bound, but they also use glue to keep all of these signatures adhered to the uh, spine of your cover. So you're going to want to go through and pull that off as best that you can. Uh, yeah, and, it, and it, you know, you might have to do it in parts. It might not all come off at one time because there's a lot on here. But once you start peeling it away, you can see where the, the other signatures are starting to be revealed. You see? So, just trying to work that off there as best I can. And then we can always go back and pull more off as we cut. All right, so I've got this much exposed. And now I'm going to see about removing one whole signature. So I'm just gonna lift up and snip, sort of the way the way that you would if you were taking out a hem in a pair of pants, you know, when you go in with a seam ripper. All right, so this is one signature of this book, right here. And as I was telling you, there is, let's see. So a signature is a set of folded papers and that's how this book was put together. So here was the papers, how they originally were. They just folded them. So there was one, two, three, four pieces of paper folded, giving you a signature of eight. And I think there's 10 signatures in this book. So now what I would do is take my time, but for the sake of the video I'm just going to pick one but I would go through my signatures here that I have made myself my little folio papers here and I would decide which one I want in this particular signature so let's we'll say this one now <clears throat> I do have a little bit of a discrepancy in sizes but that's okay because you can bind a book with even a tiny piece of paper in fact I was going to consider putting some envelopes in here so you could see how that worked that way 
Um, when you're doing your journal, sometimes you want to have a little bit of storage, you know, to s shove receipts or papers that you aren't using immediately, but you want to use later. Um, but we might add that later. This is just uh, the basics here. So that would be what I would do is put each page in each signature um, so that I have them all together. Now, you don't have to put it in the middle. You don't want to. You know what I mean? Like I, I showed you how this one is folded right in the middle. I set it right in the middle. You don't have to do that. If you want it in another spot, you can lift up your pages and put it where you want it. It's nice to have some clips before you get to poking your holes. Um, I'll have to dig mine out when we get to that part. But, um, yeah, you can arrange your pages however you want. Just, like I said, when you, when you get to cutting, careful that you don't cut into your paper. And also, make sure that you remove as much of this gluey stuff as you can. Because you can see how it's just everywhere and that's gonna make it very difficult for you to poke your needle through or your pokey tool to poke that through the holes when you're getting ready to re-sew the book and make your own new binding. So yeah, go through and clean all of those up. You see how <clears throat> there is still some thread here. Now, as far as binding is concerned, when you're going to rebind your book, um, thread-wise, I use wax book binding thread because I just so happen to have that, that and I have you know, a good amount of it, I'd like to use it, but you certainly do not need to go out and buy that if you don't have it. I would avoid yarn for binding thread because yarn you know, can unravel and then uh, where the plies have come apart, it gets very weak. So you don't want that. Um, but other kinds of cording and threads, I've used uh, embroidery floss before. That makes a good stronghold as well. So, um, yeah, just go through all of your sections here and get the threads out and pull off all of the glue and anything hanging off the edge here this is what you're going to want to do so that you have a nice clean area that you can sew on um, so let's say we're going to put this here so now we have two signatures ready and you would just keep going like so until you have your whole book apart. Now, you're going to be left with the cover, um, which I will slice off just to have this flat cover. And I was thinking I might glue it to the inside of my placemat just so I remember what book this was in case anybody asks. Or, you know, to give it a little bit more of a... Um, heavier consistency you can do that with and then get yourself another piece of cardboard for the back you know if you like it a little bit more weight to it a little bit more strength to it I'm not sure yet I haven't really thought that far in advance um, right now I'm just considering you know what uh, pages are going to go where and getting everything all prepped and ready for the sewing I'm also deciding what I want as a closure. I'm thinking of putting a sewing, like a hair tie, a hair band, to the back and then a button to the front. And then so when you bring that closure over, it'll hook onto the button and your book will stay closed. You don't have to do that. You can also sew a piece of any kind of yarn or cording anything decorative you want on the back right here like put a little bit of a stitch right there and have two long pieces and then you can tie it shut there's many many ways that you can make a closure um it's completely up to you you don't even have to have a closure i mean there's no reason 
for me, the only reason I use a closure is to keep it kind of pressed down so that it stays shut. Because otherwise my books start woo, expanding um, and, and that gives it a little bit of pressure to kind of train the pages to lay flatter. So that is how we're going to begin this project is just deconstruct your book. Start pulling all your threads and your glue off of your pages. Um, if you have other pages you're wanting to add, you know, get those ready by either washi taping them together or however you feel comfortable doing it. Um, you can, if it's a longer page, you can just fold it. You know, like if say this page was long this way, I could have just folded it and stuck it into here like this. The only thing you have to wor worry about is making sure that you're going to catch the item that's going in there with your stitches, with your new stitches. That's the only thing you have to worry about. Otherwise, you can use anything. And I have bound books with, you know, just security envelopes in them, little tiny pieces of paper. As long as it's getting one good stitch through it, um, it should stay. But seeing how this is a coloring book and a... Uh, book for me to doodle in and write in. I thought keeping all of these pages the same size would probably be a good idea. So that's um, the next the next step that we have just completed. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Um, and then I will be back when I get everything all cleaned up to do the next part. So thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.